All right, let's build our own NPC. Let's say that this sign actually blocks us. Maybe I can actually make it a little bit wider. So this signpost, I can go into it and take the signpost object and maybe I'll just make it a little bit fatter so that the player can't get past it. So it's actually blocking my progression. And I want this to be able to be removed by an NPC. So what I'm gonna do to begin with is take a prefab of my NPC and drag it into the world. This comes pre-built with everything needed connected, other than me adjusting the specific details. For example, the NPC name is pre-built a mysterious man. Maybe I'm gonna call this the gatekeeper or the sign keeper, something like that. E, I'm fine with that being the interaction key. And let's build a custom conversation with this NPC. Everything else about the interactions and everything is already built and comes with it. You'll see that everything is that it needs for showing the visuals is present because I've given it in a package for you in the prefab. You're welcome. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set some initial text, which I'm gonna say, thou shall not pass. And I'm gonna require an item. The need item text is going to be, I am quite grumpy. I don't let people pass when I'm grumpy. There's no hope. For you. However, I'm going to let this NPC require an apple, just one of them, and have the receive text be, hey, how did you know I was hungry? Huh. Uh, maybe I'll say munch, oh, munch, munch. I can't spell munch for some reason. Munch, munch. Wow. I sure feel a lot less grumpy now. I guess you can pass. Dot, dot, dot. And the follow-up text will be uh, size happily. That's it. And I want my quest completion change here to be this signpost. So I want there to be a change and I want the signpost not to turn on. I want it to turn off when the quest is complete. So I just, I turn that to the off state. Let's see how this works. Now I go through and I know in advance, I just need one apple. So I'm going to go pick this apple up like that. Snag it with my E-press and go over to this NPC and talk to him. Thou shall not pass. Hey, how did you know I was hungry? Munch, munch, munch. Oh, I sure feel all as grumpy now. I guess you can pass. And wonderful. Size happily. But now that signpost has been removed. So I was able to uh, actually progress through that and add in my own custom storytelling content connected feature just by using this prefab, which is pretty wonderful. However, uh, maybe I'll call this really like the sign keeper, just so I know it's label in that uh, system up there. However, what if I wanted to use my own visual that wasn't this pre-built NPC thing? What if I wanted to use my own custom visual to be able, be able to make this uh, all happen a little bit uh, in more of a custom manner so that I can have my own cool uh, looking thing here to talk to. Well, something that I could do, maybe just to show this here is I could import like a cool asset or make one on my own. But right now I'm just gonna make something really simple. What if I make just like a, a sphere and I'm gonna have this be like a floating orb that I can talk to sitting here. That just maybe does a bit of storytelling. How do I get this floating orb mechanic to work? Well, I'm gonna give it a bit of a material. Maybe I'll create a custom material that I'll call floating orb and I'll give this a kind of a cool color. Let's give this like a fluorescent pinkish color. So it stands out really nicely. Awesome. And floating orb, I'll change the name. So how do we make our own custom NPC character that we could interact with? Well, my biggest tip for you is to actually use and refer to something that already works as a great reminder. I'm gonna move one of my NPCs in the organization just right next to it so I can take a look and compare things. I need to get this floating orb to be matched up to how this NPC looks. I can use this as a reference. So let's go through the list here. I need a mesh renderer and a capsule collider. Although the collider depends on the shape. So capsule collider, because this is a capsule, so this would be a sphere collider. This orb has a renderer and a collider already. Wonderful. So that's all I actually need so far. And for those first two things, now. This collider is set to is trigger, 
So let's just make sure that collider is set to is trigger as well. But those two components are so far the same. Next, I need a rigid body. This seems to be required for this type of object. So I'm just going to add a rigid body by searching for it under add component and hitting enter. Okay, so so far so good, adding in the components that I need. Now, one thing to note is that if I want this to float, I need to turn off gravity. So I'm going to do that there. So, okay, now this is going to be like a floating orb sitting there. Next, I need a conversation manager and a conversation script attached to this. If I go to my floating orb, where do I get these scripts? Well, under the script folder. I have a conversation manager I can click and drag over here. And then a conversation I can click and drag over here. All right, so I have these two components attached now. Let's continue by looking underneath this NPC to see what's included underneath here. Now here's where we have to do something just a tiny bit uh, more involved, which is I have these two components that are a little bit more complicated. This is the prompt in the world that shows up over top of something. And this is the, the text that appears on the screen when you're interacting with them. And we really don't wanna make these from scratch because it's quite, quite a bit of work. So what I want to be able to do is actually just borrow these things and apply them to this prefab by having a different prefab. This UI canvas I've already saved as a prefab. However, I want this to be, uh, this world canvas to be a prefab as well. So I'm going to drag it down in here. Uh, oh, it wants me to open up this prefab to get access to it. I'll, I'll just include this for you in your project. You should see it kind of popping out right off the bat when you work with things, but these two things, I am now able to actually drag in onto this floating orb and give it attached to it, both of these two things here. And notice how the world canvas is now above the floating orb. And maybe I'll readjust it a little bit to position it a little bit more nicely. And the UI canvas just should, it should work nicely on its own uh, in the way that it's been constructed in this level here. So, I mean, Maybe I've made some bugs. We'll, we'll see if I have to fix anything here, but I've just used these, these pre-created things just like in the other NPCs. And I've attached them to my new custom one just to kind of get things up and running. And just to see if things work, I'm gonna add one initial piece of text. Beep, borp, blip. Definitely the right types of sounds for a floating orb type thing. And let's just see what happens. We'll find out if this works at all. Maybe there's something that might be broken here and we have something going on with our reference and our floating orb that we have to connect up. Perfect. So these are the errors that we want to get used to seeing. And in my floating orb, if I click on these red errors at the bottom, see how I clicked on this and it kicked me to this menu in the console for the errors, it highlights the floating orb, telling me that the errors are inside of this object. So how do we actually manage and deal with this? Well, there's some information here. Object reference set to, to an instant, uh, uh, not set to an instance of the object. So it's saying null reference. There's something not connected, basically. Another reference not set to an instance of the object. There's things that are not connected yet. So I can clear this and go back to my project view. And let's take a look at my floating orb. If there's any slots along the way that are not connected. And I see I have some issues. There's none showing up in some spots. Well, first of all, NPC name. Let's call this floating orb. But now I need this interact prompt. What is this interact prompt? Well, that's actually the world canvas interact prompt right under here. So I can actually click and drag this into this slot. And what is the NPC text UI? It's this UI canvas right here. That's managing the information and the text that the, uh, that the NPC is talking about. I think I could actually connect this world canvas. Oh no, I have to do the interact prompt underneath it. That's all right. So I need to connect the interact here and the canvas here. Let me see if the any of this. Yeah, so that's exactly the right order to do things. And now we have those things linked up, which means our floating orb has the right stuff connected to it. Now, if you run this again, we should be seeing that it's actually making sense of how to not mess it mess up the screen right off the bat like so. And now when I get close to this, we're gonna see if I can actually interact with this in some way. And it looks like maybe it's a little bit too high for me to interact with it. So what's going on with this? Well, let me move this object, please. Um, when I try to move it, actually, because there's other components attached to this, sometimes this floating orb gets a little bit confused about where we can actually move it to um, in terms of the actual uh, 
movement tools in Unity, which makes this a little bit of a tricky thing to work with. Let me think of a solution really quick. I'll be right back to the recording. Actually, I just realized the solution is quite easy. Up in the top here, we have this button called Center, which figures out where the center point between all the different components are. Because we have a canvas attached to it, it makes the center really far away. But if I click on this and turn it to Pivot, it actually allows me to just choose the reference point that's really close to my object, which is going to allow me to move it down. And then I can change it back to center afterwards. So having done that, let's press run. And let's see if this makes any difference now that it's closer for us to interact with. So we don't have to make too many changes to our height detection for interacting with things. And right now, I still see that there is a, it's a difficult for my player to actually get that interaction with this object. So let's try to figure out what's going on here. Now, if I'm inside of it, I can talk and we'll see. It says test, beep, borp, blip. So it didn't actually have the right uh, text of the first time through, but it did the second time through. So we have to fix a couple more things here, which are the main one being that you notice that I have to actually touch this object to be able to interact with it. I can't, I can't be close like these other ones. So what are these other NPCs doing that's different? Well, notice these green, this kind of green boundary around it. This green boundary is the zone in its capsule collider that I've expanded to allow it to have a bigger talk radius. How do I do this in my custom object? Well, where I have my sphere collider, if it lets me open it, I'm going to click on edit the bounds and then I'm going to click on the little tiny dots on the edges and pull them out to make this boundary bigger, allowing me to have a larger zone to interact with it. Let's just make it maybe about this size. Perfect. And let's go back in and give it a test again. And now you'll see that it doesn't let me get quite so close to it, but as I get close, I can talk and it says test, beep, borp, blip. Wonderful. So we've managed to mostly fix our issues here. The issue here is that our game is starting off with the generic conversation test because I haven't actually assigned the conversation to the manager yet. It's figuring out what to do eventually, but to make sure it has none of that kind of glitchiness, what we have to do is in the conversation manager, we have to let it actually have a conversation and connect the one that we designed to this spot, which is going to allow me to have that be the first thing that appears. It's going to jump to the conversation right off the bat, beep, borp, blip. And now, of course, I could add require items and other content, or I can add other lines of dialogue if I want to. So I know you can always press minus to delete one of those lines if you want to remove some in the future. But there you go. You've been able to create your own custom interactable NPC. A bit of an involved process. If you just want to use my pre-crafted ones, you're welcome to, but I think it's totally doable. And if you get stuck, just always rewatch this section of the video, pause when you need to, go through it step by step and get it built and running, or you can ask for support if you need it. Wonderful. So now we know how to actually add, edit, and create our own NPCs with conversations and quests. Wow, that's a lot of content we've enabled. In the next video, we're going to learn a little bit more about hmm, scene and level management.